application as well. And let's check one more time what we have. Uh, we have admin with the controllers for uh, book. That's where edit and add and delete things are. No modules and views correspond to that. We have add, add, and delete. Uh, then the default, we have the authentication controller that we want everyone to use. And then the error and index uh, for the same purpose. And we have the form, the login form uh, to complement the authentication. Then we have the view scripts supporting that. And library uh, has the books to list them all. List. Okay. Uh, so uh, you have to go through this trouble if you have a single default module and you want to migrate it to a full module application. If you already started with uh, modules, then you don't have to go through all the stress. Uh, you can just uh, type in ZF and uh, just to show you what the syntax for the modules things are. Uh, the regular time I just show you is create a module. Uh, say we want to create a controller like we did before, we have to just type in ZF create a controller and then in its name. Um, now we got to include the module as one of its parameters too. And for I don't know what reason, the module is at the very end you know, of the command and you have this index action included a parameter in there as well that, that needs to be given a value um, so that the command can jump onto this uh, last parameter here. And what this parameter here does is tells if the index action should be included uh, in the class uh, with the controller name. So uh, say we want to create a controller for user management. Uh, so I'm going to create a controller users and uh, I do want an index action and I want this uh, to be a part of the admin module. Uh, so let's see what all it did. Uh, it created a user controller.php instead of the controllers directory. Uh, let's confirm that. Right, users, con users controller. Uh, it created a index action inside of it. Uh, it created a view script for each of those actions, for the index or for, or for only one action that I created so far, which is index. Uh, and then the same thing goes to the action. Uh, we put in the controller name, uh, whether the view should be included or not, and the module it came from. So uh, right now we just have the index action. I want to have a ability to list all the users so zf create action list which is a part of users controller i want to have the view script enabled uh, and created rather and i want it to be a part of the admin module as well so let's see what happened here we have another a method created inside of the user controller uh, creates a list.phtml inside of the views directory and let's just see what happened yep we got the users in there now and the uh, action is available so if you are just starting out uh, then using uh, zend tool is a pretty quick way to get these things done if you don't, then you can um, organize the directory structure manually, but it's not all that difficult. It's just a matter of creating the directories and uh, throwing things around in the appropriate place. Next thing we need to do is to adjust all the module and namespace names in the bootstraps. Yeah. So we're going to take everything one step at a time. And we're going to start by commenting out all of these here so it doesn't conflict because if I just uh, go there I will get an error and then uh, I'm going to comment this out for now as well. 
So the idea here is to have each module in its own namespace and what that means is that each class name is going to have some sort of prefix uh, that tells what module it belongs to. The default module will take no prefix, therefore its namespace is going to be blank. The application path will then have to be adjusted to the new directory called modules default. The next thing that we need to do is to bootstrap each individual module. Uh, and I think this is where the uh, Zen Frameworks command line tool uh, really has a problem. Uh, it does not create a bootstrap uh, file in the module directory like it should. Uh, hopefully in the uh, next version it's going to be fixed. Uh, so we're going to create a bootstrap uh, PHP file in each of the module directories. Uh, one for admin, uh, one for default, and one for library. And it's going to be similar to the main applications bootstrap, um, except it's going to have to have the name uh, the same as a directory where it's located plus the bootstrap name and it's going to extend a different uh, class here. So if I'm in the admin bootstrap uh, my class is going to be called admin name of the directory bootstrap and it's going to extend zend application module bootstrap and it just uh, needs to be an empty class that's all the name of the directory underscore bootstrap extends zend application module bootstrap and it's going to be the same for all others uh, the default one the default one is going to be called default bootstrap and the library is going to be called library bootstrap. So with these individual bootstrap files you can uh, configure each module uniquely. Uh, one last thing to do before we can activate the application is to tell the Zend application as a whole where these module and bootstrap files are. We will do that in application.ini file and uh, because we don't have just one controller directory anymore we will take it out and replace it with module directory and then it will find the controllers based on the module uh, so there we go module directory and the last thing we need for it to be able to load the modules uh, automatically is to create a module variable in memory uh, one of the ways to do this is to simply create a modules resource and it doesn't matter what value you give it as long as it's created and it's in memory so that the application has something to work on. Um, then just before we activate the application I'm going to um, enable the layout back so that we can get a visual representation of what we're working with uh, but because we don't have the ACL prepared yet uh, I will take out the ACL setting of the navigation.